at puberty, estrogen in conjunction with growth hormone enhances female breast development. Males do not develop pronounced or physiologically matured breasts because their bodies produce lower levels of estrogens and higher levels of androgens, namely testosterone, which suppress the effects of estrogens in developing breast tissue. In women, the breasts overlay the pectoralis major muscle and usually extend from the level of the second rib to the level of the sixth rib in the front of the rib cage. The breasts cover much of the chest area and the chest walls. At the front of the chest, the breast tissue can extend from the clavicle or the collarbone to the middle of the sternum or the breast bone. At the sides of the chest, the breast tissue can extend into the axilla or the armpit and can reach as far to the back as the latissimus dorsi muscle extending from the lower back through the humerus bone which is the longest bone of the upper arm. As a mammary gland, the breast is composed of predominantly two types of tissue, that is the adipose tissue and the glandular tissue which affects the lactation functions of the breast. The superficial fascia is an area of fatty or adipose and fibrous tissue with associated nerves, blood and lymphatic vessels. The fatty tissue is supported by extensions of the deep fascia and suspensory ligaments that function most prominently in the young, well-developed post-pubescent female breast. Packed within the adipose tissue is a collection of branching ducts known as the lactiferous ducts. In the male and in the non-pregnant, non-lactating female breast, these ducts are undeveloped. Very few or absolutely no glands are associated with the ducts in those populations. At puberty, the increased secretion of estrogen from the ovaries and perhaps the adrenal glands in the female influences the enlargement of the nipple and the areola, as well as a generally marked increase in local fat proliferation. As a result, the breast enlarges to some degree, though it is highly variable. In the early stages of pregnancy, the lactiferous duct system undergoes profound proliferation. Small inactive tubular and alveolar or tubular alveolar glands begin to form, which eventually open into the alveolar ducts. A lobule consists of a number of these ducts and glands. There are approximately 15 to 20 lobes, which consist of a number of lobules and an interconnecting interlobular ducts. The interlobular ducts converge to form as many as 20 lactiferous ducts. These ducts dilate to form lactiferous sinuses and then narrow again within the nipple. These sinuses function as milk reservoirs during lactation. The nipple consists of pigmented skin with some smooth muscle fibers set in fibrous tissue. Erection of the nipple may enhance flow of milk through the ducts. The circular areola is highly pigmented more than the surrounding skin. It contains sebaceous glands that may act as a skin lubricant during periods of nursing a baby. In the latter stages of pregnancy, the alveolar glands undergo maturation and begin to form breast milk. Milk production peaks after delivery of the newborn as a result of the action of several hormones influencing the gland cells. The movement of milk toward the ducts, which is called a letdown, and excretion of milk to the nipple is the result of neuroendocrine reflex mechanism 
initiated by the baby's sucking on the nipple. The lymphatic vessels are an important part of the breast. They drain the fatty portion of the milk produced during lactation. They also transfer infected material as well as neoplastic or cancer cells from the breast to more distant parts. These arrows indicate the potential lymphatic avenues for metastasis or the spread of infection. The most common channel of spread is to the axillary lymph nodes followed by the apical nodes and the parasternal nodes which are located alongside the sternum. In the average adolescent or prepubescent female, the developing breast possesses mainly the lactiferous sinus and lactiferous ducts with minimal fat. As she develops into a postpubescent adult, there is substantial amount of superficial fascia or fat, followed by development of glandular lobes during pregnancy and the enlargement of these lobes at the late stages of pregnancy and after delivery. Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe to the channel. More videos coming up. See you in the next one.